Hey guys, what's up? It's Jordan here, and today we're going to focus on making your stream look the best that it can. So we're going to go over output settings and what you should use to basically stream to Twitch. This tutorial should work for Streamlabs OBS and OBS because they're pretty much the same. And we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. So I'm assuming you have your scenes and sources already set up. If you don't, I have a video on that that I'll link below. And we're just going to go ahead and click on the settings here. And the first thing you want to check is your stream. Make sure you have your stream key in here and your server selected and your service. So I stream on Twitch. Usually keep server on auto or sometimes I'll manually select it. And stream key, you can get that from your uh, Twitch dashboard. So if you click over here after you sign in, click on your icon, go to settings and then down to the channel tab and you can copy this and that's your stream key. And the next thing that we want to look at um, once we get that done is go ahead and put that stream key in there is server. So auto doesn't work the best for everybody. So in that case, there is a tool that I use called Twitch bandwidth test and I'll have this link in the description below. You paste that stream, same stream key here and then you just uh, basically hit reset and select which servers you want to try. So for me, I would try all the East Coast servers. And of course, if you start testing, I'm just going to show you guys real quick. It'll show your latency to the server, your bandwidth that you have available to the server, and the quality of your connection to the server. Just choose whichever latency is the lowest, bandwidth is the highest, and quality is the best. That's pretty simple. So for me, I've already tested mine in Ashburn, Virginia and New York is the best servers for me. So if auto isn't really working out for you, you can manually select it using this tool. And the reason I like this tool is because sometimes there's issues with the Twitch servers. So Ashburn, Virginia might be having issues and my stream is lagging and I'm not really sure why. Usually you can try to switch servers and see if that helps. And I'll have that linked in the description below. So your bandwidth might not be as high as this and we're gonna talk about that. So if we go to speedtest.net, go ahead and test your speed. So I have mine zoomed in quite a lot because I don't want to show my IP. But the main thing you want to focus on after you test is your upload speed. So my recommendation is anything that is 10 upload speed. So 10 megabits per second or higher is pretty much good to stream any kind of bit rate you want. Now, if you have a upload speed that's lower than that, say it's five, then you're going to be limited on how good your stream's going to look, or even if you can stream at all. And we're going to take a look at that in just one second. So mine is 20, so I could basically stream at any bit rate that Twitch allows that I want. And the reason that I say that is because if we pull up a calculator, you usually don't want to use more than 80% of your upload bandwidth, or you're probably going to have some connection issues. So say somebody with a 10 megabit per second upload speed times that by 0.8 and you get 8. And Twitch caps it at 6,000 and this 8 basically means 8,000 or 8 megabits per second or 8,000 bits per or kilobits per second. I know it's kind of confusing, but think of 8 as 8,000 and you'll see what I'm saying as soon as we go over to here. So Twitch goes in kilobits per second and so basically if you had a 10 upload speed and you only wanted to use 80% of that you would only use 8,000 so you can stream anything in here. But say if your internet was a little bit worse so you tested it and this was 5 instead so we'll do 5 times 0.8 you usually don't want to use more than 4,000 bit rate. So here you could not use this option because it recommends 4500 to 6000. You could probably do 1080p 30fps or 720p 60fps or anything basically lower from this box down. So what I like to do is once you test this, if you're above 10 you're pretty much good but if you're below that then basically take that number. So say if this was 3, take 3 times it by 80%. And you wouldn't want to use more than like 2.4, so that's 2,400 kilobits per second, if that makes any sense. And for that case, you would want to stream like 720p 30fps or lower. 
So now we're going to go over back to Streamlabs OBS and talk about it a little bit. So if we click on the output tab, now that we have the stream tab set up, you want to change this from simple to advanced. And the only tab that we're going to be focusing on right now is the streaming tab. Audio track is going to always be set to one because when you're streaming, you can only use one audio track. So when we go to the encoder, um, there is a hardware NVENC encoder. So basically if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, this is what most people use to stream with because it really doesn't take a performance hit on your computer and it looks pretty decent for what it does. Um, hardware QSV, that's Intel QuickSync. I highly recommend not using this ever. It's a pretty bad encoder. Ever use the QSV hardware encoder? Now software encoder would be if you're playing a game that's not really CPU intensive and you just want the best looking quality stream because software x264 looks a whole lot better than NVNC but it's a lot harder to run. So for instance say I'm playing Fortnite and I have a 1080 Ti and an i9-9900K. Even when I stream at software x264 on the same PC I get lag spikes in game and it's kind of choppy so I don't really recommend it. This is better for games with a lot less uh, movement, um, especially like less CPU intensive games like, let's say, maybe like League of Legends or an indie game. Or if you're running a two PC setup like I do, an X264 would probably be what you want to choose. So most people is going to focus on NVNC, and if you have a updated card you can use the new encoder which I recommend. If you're using the old encoder, it's basically the same settings as I'm about to show you here. Click on Enforce Stream Server Encoding Settings. And the rate control, we want this at CBR, that's constant bitrate. And that's what Twitch calls for if we look over here. Um, it'll say basically that they want a constant bitrate. It says it somewhere on here. <laughs> So constant bitrate because you don't want your bitrate fluctuating with variable bitrate or it's going to look worse in some parts. So 6000 is the pretty much cap for Twitch as you can see here. So 6000 is as high as you can stream at. And if you've looked at other tutorials they might have told you oh don't go past 3500 or don't go past 4000 because people won't be able to watch your stream because it's going to be too high of a quality settings. Well, that might have been true a few years ago, but it's 2019 and most people do have um, cable internet or above. Even satellite internet can usually handle 6000. So basically 6000 bitrate is what you would watch a, a Netflix stream at 1080p at. So most people is able to do it. I recommend doing this just because it makes your stream look a little bit better. Um, the only people that probably wouldn't be able to watch this is people on 4G like mobile, but basically just making your stream look the best is what we're focusing on here. So my recommendation is use 6000. I've never really had anyone complain that they couldn't watch my stream because of that. And I don't have the transcoding options most of the time on Twitch where people can lower the quality. So I just say go with 6000 if you can handle it. And keyframe interval set that to two because Twitch calls for it. And if we look over here, they call for the keyframe interval of two. So basically on all of these, they want the profile on main slash high. And I use the max preset here. And here's the profile. You can set it on main or high. I set it on high because it looks a little bit better. And max quality. Most people I feel like will be able to use this one. If you have a 1060 or above, you can probably use max quality. Anything below that, I would probably try lowering it. Basically start with max quality. If you see any kind of issues with stream skipping or anything, then maybe lower that down to quality or performance, but I really wouldn't go below performance. So for me, with the 1080 Ti, I'd probably use max quality. And if you're using the new codec, you can click on Psycho Visual Tuning, makes it look a little bit better. GPU set that to zero, that's just using your main graphics card. If you have a SLI setup, you can use your different graphics card, but I don't really recommend going into that. I just leave it at zero. Max B frame, set that to two, because I'm pretty sure that that's what Twitch calls for. It doesn't really say it actually. 
but I know that if you go pretty much above four, then it doesn't let you stream. So keep that around too. And we're not going to worry about the recording tab. Audio bitrate has to be capped at 160 due to Twitch's uh, audio bitrate. Because I think mobile users can't, they have audio issues past 160. So I recommend keeping it there. And as you can see here, same thing with the normal NVNC codec. Only thing that you're missing here really is the Psycho visual tuning. And let's say that you are using a two PC stream setup or you're streaming something that isn't really intensive and you want the best looking stream. Hit X264, which is CPU encoding. Make sure that you enforce the stream server encoding settings. Constant bitrate, 6,000. Keyframe interval of two. And I would probably start with very fast. As you can see here, higher equals less CPU. If you go above very fast, I wouldn't even worry about it because X2 or the NVNC codec is going to look better. Start with very fast and go down. My recommendation for very fast is probably like an i3 to i5 from Intel or maybe like a Ryzen 3 to Ryzen 5 from AMD. Faster or fast, I would probably recommend a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 or an Intel i7. And for medium, I would probably recommend the Ryzen 7 2700X or the Intel i7-8700K or better. So with me where I use the 9900K, I would probably select medium there because I have a pretty good processor. I would start with very fast and just kind of work your way down the list and when you start getting skips, that's when you know to pretty much go back to the other setting. And profile, set that to high and tune is none and no x264 options and of course the audio is going to be set to 160. we're not going to worry about recording because i might do a different video on the best recording settings later but this is just for the stream i'm going to assume you have your audio set up if not i have a video on that i'll link in the description and now we're going to come to video so the base canvas resolution is going to be the resolution of your monitor so 1920 by 1080 is probably going to be most people's. And of course, set it to that. And then output scale resolution is going to be what you want to stream to. So with Twitch, even though on here it recommends this bit rate for 1080p 60fps, at a 6000 kilobit per second cap at Twitch, 1080p looks pretty bad compared to 720p. So essentially, even though that your resolution, say if you're streaming, all right, let's say that we're streaming at a bit rate of 6,000 at 1080p 60 FPS versus the same settings, but at 720p 60 FPS, this is actually going to look better due to the 6,000 kilobit per second cap because 1080p just doesn't look good at 6,000 kilobits per second for 1080p to look good you need at least like eight to 10,000 kilobits per second and Twitch just doesn't allow it. So what I recommend most people is literally always keep this at 720p and don't go above it or your stream's actually gonna look worse. Downscale filter, set this to the very best one if possible. Um, this will make sure that you have less blur and it sharpens your image a little bit so you don't get kind of the blur and out of focus image. And FPS top, set that to common. And you can stream at Twitch at 30, 48, and 60 FPS, I think. I really wouldn't go below that. I would recommend 30 or 60 due to compatibility issues. You can do 48, which is a good in between, but honestly, I would just stick to 30 or 60. And that should have you set. And that's pretty much all for the settings. With the advanced tab, you don't really have to do anything in here. Maybe set this to above normal and just keep the color range the same basically don't really mess with that and that's pretty much it for all those settings so let me know what you guys think and if you want to you can visit me on twitch.tv slash and as you can see from my past broadcast um, i actually do have a few vods of where i've used those settings so let's go to this one this one was from the other night um as you can see here 
it looks pretty good for a Twitch stream. If you've looked at other streams before, um, the webcam is a little bit blurry, but I'm working on some webcam settings. Other than that, it looks pretty good to me. And you can kind of just see the VODs and kind of get a feel of what yours might look like. And of course, check me out on Twitch, leave me a follow. I'd appreciate it. And that's pretty much going to be it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, just let me know in the comments below. And I'll be glad to help. And pretty much, yeah, just check out my stream. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, drop it below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.